Well, I comment on Neville Goddard's 1969 version of No Other Foundation. We will enjoy a rowdy yakitori bar in the middle of the Japanese countryside. Yakitori are delicious chicken skewers, and the Japanese have many different ways to enjoy them. Neville says, Those who are not awake will continue to fight shadows in this world, for everything here is imagination made visible. Those who are fighting against the establishment do not realize that they are fighting against the objectified images of their own mind. But the day will come when he who is dreaming his world into being will awake within himself to know he is its foundation. A man is saved from his dream by returning to the state he occupied before the dream began. So for sure, when you think there's chaos in the world, when you think something is out to get you, for sure no. You are sleeping in the dream of life. There's no sense to try to fight it, change it from within the dream, but instead to understand the nature of the dream and the source from how it was created within you. As Neville says, a savior will never be found in the mist of shadows. And if you're waiting for someone to save you, save the world, save society, how can a savior be found in a shadow world when it is nothing but a reflection of you? It is up to you to wake up to properly use your imagination, and to see if your world changes, to really see. And Neville doesn't mean just test this out once or twice, but in earnestness. And if you want to wake fast, hunger for it like a drowning man hungers for air. Neville goes on to say, when the dreamer in you begins to awake, then you realize that the world is a dream and you can prove it to yourself. If this waking world is as much a dream as your sleeping world, you should be able to control it. In the dream of last night, you might have been frightened and believed for a moment that the event was real, outside of yourself and beyond your control. Only when you awoke did you discover that it was a dream. Had you known at the time that it was a dream, you could have controlled it and made the event conform to your desire. Now awake in this world, you think it is real and outside of yourself, but I tell you, this world is a dream too. It is every bit as much a dream as the dream of the night, only it is more difficult to control because it appears so real and independent of your perception, but it can be controlled by a simple act of assumption. And just as Neville said, when you slept last night and you dreamed, did you know you were dreaming? Only when you woke up, you realized it was a dream. Unless, of course, time to time those who realize they're dreaming become lucid in the night dream. Just think for one moment what Neville is saying. What if, as you listen now, this is also a dream, but the only way you're going to know is to become lucid, and to try to control the dream. And Neville, as taught by his teacher, teaches to control the dream by assumption. Harness the imagination by assumption to evoke a feeling. And if it doesn't take the first time, persist until it makes the impression. Neville says, use your imagination consciously, and after a while, you will stop fighting shadows. The conflict within you will cease, and your world will be at peace. Let those who are still asleep dream their violence into the world. Is perfectly all right, for in its mist you will walk knowing you are protected, for you are awake. This is your dream too, and no dreamer can be destroyed by his dream. You can stop dreaming violence and start dreaming peace while you are here, and share your awareness with those who will listen, but not everyone will. So as Neville's saying here, to imagine consciously, part of that means as you go about your day, becoming more aware of what you're letting yourself go on to think the different streams of thoughts we carry our awareness on. Watch what you think. And if it's not something you want to bring into your world, you're going to have to learn to stop it. And the best way to stop it is put your thoughts on what do you want instead. How would it feel if it already were so? And entering that train of revised thought. But many kind of find a pleasure in such thrills. There's an interest in gossip or watching a thrilling movie. But when that mood starts to erupt in a tangible experience in your life reflecting such events, then you turn to such teachings as Neville to end your fear, to end your suffering. Neville teaches you to exercise this imagination, take some part of your life that seems unredeemable, rearrange it in your mind's eye, what do you want it to be like instead, and play with it in imagination until for a moment you forget your imagining and you feel it real. Your feelings come alive, just like when you daydream. Don't say you can't do it, because you do it all the time when you daydream, or even when you go to bed at night and dream and don't even know you're dreaming. You all have it within you. 
In closing, Neville says, Try it. What I have told you tonight concerning the coming of Christ is the only foundation, as Neville teaches Christ being your imagination. You will never disprove my words, for I am not speaking from speculation or theory, but from experience. When this little garment I now wear is taken away, I will no longer be a part of this age, for I have awakened from this dream called life. And one day, when your dream is over, a series of events will unfold within you, and you too will awaken and return as the one being who began the venture. Believe me, there is no other foundation, no other God than he who began a good work in you, and he will bring you to completion. Now as Neville says, take something in your life that seems impossible and see it different. Enter that vision. Feel a sort of virtual reality, what you would experience if it was so with the power of your imagination, the same way you did as a kid without questioning. Simply just dare yourself to do it, to take one moment, and we can do that right now. Now let us go into the silence. See? 